Welcome to part two of my six part series, everything you need to know to run Disney. Now I'll do my best to give you as much as you need to know. So basically what I have done is I have put together everything that I have learned over the past year of running multiple run Disney events since the return of them in person, as well as just frequently asked questions I see asked in the group kind of on a consistent basis. So part one was all about packing. So feel free to go back after this and watch that one. And today what we're gonna talk about is logistics. So basically everything that happens, basically kind of before rate, the races actually start. So things like transportation, expo, merchandise, all of that good stuff, as well as just talking a little bit about ordering groceries, et cetera. Something also that I'll mention is in part one, I did give you a free download for a packing list that is some suggested packing, you know, things to pack, as well as today, I'm also going to give you a free download for a grocery list. Both of them are going to have some suggestions as well as two blank versions that you could take and use for yourself. Within today's video, I am going to intersperse a little bit of footage that I have gathered from past race weekends. And so I just find for myself, I like to be able to kind of see things, get a lay of the land a little bit. I'm also going to use some of the maps. Now I'm going to use the most recent maps that have come out, which is going to be for Princess Weekend because we're about a week out from Princess right now. So those are the maps that I'm going to use. And just know that the wide world of sport maps remain exactly the same. What can change though is the expo maps and things like that. And I'll talk a little bit more about that a little bit later on. I thought I would just really quickly talk a little bit about getting from the airport to your Disney resort. Now there are basically three ways that you can do that. And one of them is mirrors. The second is sunshine flyer. And the third is ride share like Uber or Lyft. I've taken mirrors twice. I have never taken Sunshine Flyer, mostly because you have to book it at least four days in advance. And I just haven't uh, done that. So my guess though, is that Sunshine Flyer and mirrors are very similar. They're a coach bus. And basically there is a bus that goes to a resort area and it will go and drop off in those different resorts. So the benefit of something like mirrors or Sunshine Flyer is you just, you book your ticket, you get in line, they take you to your resort, they drop you off. The downfall to them is that generally you're gonna have a little bit of a wait while they kind of wait for everyone to be able to load the bus. So I have had a short wait and I've had a long wait. The other downfall is that they're gonna usually go to a grouping of resorts. So your resort might be the last one that they go to. So just know that there also might be a little bit of a delay in you kind of getting your vacation started by the time uh, you get dropped off. There is pros and cons to Uber. So the pros being that you basically have a very minimal wait, maybe 10 minutes before they're gonna pick you up from your terminal and take you to your resort. And of course, the fact that they take you directly to your resort, not to anywhere else. The downfall is, is that there is surge pricing. So ju that's just something to be aware of. I found that the pricing for me was slightly higher than if I were to take mirrors. And if I was with somebody sharing that cost, it probably would have been almost the same cost, if not cheaper than mirrors. So just kind of factor that into your considerations as well. And for me, I would rather spend a little bit more money and not wait at the airport than save a little bit of money on mirrors. That's just my own personal opinion. You need to do what's best for you. About two weeks out from the event, you're gonna receive an email from Run Disney and that has your virtual event guide in there. So that is gonna have things like spectator information, race etiquette, expo information, merchandise. Basically a lot of the stuff that I'm gonna talk about today is in there. Now, what I am doing today though, is I'm kind of saying, this is my experience with it. This is kind of the, the meat and potatoes of what you need to know, but just know that everything is in there. Now, if for some reason you don't get emails for Run Disney, I know sometimes some people do, some people don't for some reason, just know that people will post in the Facebook group. So just if, if no one is talking about it yet in the Facebook groups, most likely it's not out yet. If you see a lot of buzz or hubbub in the Facebook groups, just know that it's probably been posted and somebody is gonna post the link that you can access it. Let's talk about the expo, merchandise, and bib pickup. So you need to get yourself there. If you're not staying on a Disney resort, you are going to either 
take your rental car, or take an Uber, get yourself to the ESPN Wide World of Sport. If you're staying at a Disney resort, then there is busing all weekends long to take you to and from there, as well as to take you to and from the start finish line at Epcot. A couple of things that I just want to mention about the run Disney transportation. Number one is that they're coach buses. So that means that they have a couple of steps to go up and down out of. They're not the regular Disney transportation that takes you around to the parks and such. So if you are with someone or you are someone with specific mobility needs, just know that you may need to talk to someone or make some alternate arrangements to get you to and from the expo as well as to get you to and from the start line. The other thing I want to mention is that they aren't just for run Disney participants, your friends and family can come with you to both of those things, the expo, that area, as well as to the start finish line at Epcot. And then last thing is, is that they will go around to all of the bus stops. So if you are staying at a larger Disney resort and you have a bus stop that is away from the main building, they will make a big loop around and they will stop at all the bus stops. Let's talk about bib pickup, merchandise, and the expo. So all of those things are at the ESPN Wide World of Sports. There are three buildings there that you're gonna to wanna to visit. The arena, which is where the merch is, the field house, which is bib pickup, and the athletic center, which is the expo. Let's start off with bib pickup. Bib pickup is located at the field house, which is the furthest building away from where either you're gonna park or the buses are gonna drop you off. And in there is where you're gonna get your bibs. I've had different experiences with how much of a lineup is to get in there as well as how it's been set up. And so it's just been a little bit different based on either the race weekend, um, the wait time is different based on like what time of day and which day you go there. Just know first day, first thing, it's gonna be very busy. So just be prepared that you might need to stand in some lines even to get into bid pickup. Marathon weekend, the lineup was it went fast and it moved quickly, but I was shocked at how long the lineup was just to get in to get my bibs. What I'm gonna talk about might change a little bit based on your race weekend, and I'll kind of try and address that as I talk about them. Bibs need to be picked up a day prior to your race, so just know that you do need to pick up your own bibs. People cannot pick up your bibs for you, and you also need to make sure that you bring your photo ID, so do not forget that. The other thing that you'll get sent is a link to download your Expo check-in pass. I've only ever really used that, I find, to get my bib number off of, um, but just know that that's also something that you'll want to download and put on your wallet. Like I said, sometimes this changes a little based on race weekend, but here are some of the things that you can expect. When you pick your bib up, you are gonna walk past a table of paper waivers. If you're international like I am and you're not able to sign your waiver digitally, then you are going to either bring it with you or just grab one from the table and fill it out. They're gonna have plenty there. So for any reason you don't have a printer or anything like that, it's no problem. There's always tons there. Now, if you're from the States and you had any trouble with it, again, just pick up a paper waiver so that you can hand that in. If you were able to fill out your waiver digitally, you don't even have to worry about that. Now, Within that room, there's gonna be booths, and on those booths, there are going to be a range of numbers, and those are bib numbers. So you're gonna find whichever lineup corresponds the, to the range where your bib number lands. You are going to stand in that line, move yourself to the front. Once you get there, you're gonna show your ID, have your Expo Pass handy. I have yet to be asked for it, and then I usually have to hand in my paper waiver. So they're gonna check, make sure that they have the waiver, digitally or paper, they're gonna check your ID and then they're gonna give you your bibs. Now in that same room, generally there's uh, racer relations. And so for example, if you had any trouble with registrations, like your, your registration went missing from your account or something's wrong with your corral, uh, you can stand in line to talk to them. For example, my husband's registration disappeared off his account and it was no problem, they helped us out. Now that you have your bibs, head on over to get your t-shirts. 
Now, depending on the race weekend, etc., sometimes it's in the same room where you pick up your bib, sometimes it's in the expo, and that's also dependent on if you're doing a singular race versus a challenge. So just make sure that you check that digital event guide to look at the maps to see what it says. So the, what you do need to know about getting your shirts though is at the top of your bib is going to be a tear off tab and on there is going to be your shirt size. And then same thing, they're going to have big signs where it shows what line you need to get into to get your size of shirt. You're going to exchange that tab for your bag of shirts. The bag that your shirts come in is also the bag that you are going to use for a gear drop if you choose to do gear drop, which I'll talk about in my next video talking about race morning and such. Now, before you leave that area, I highly recommend that you check your shirts. Number one, to make sure that they're the right size, that they're all the right size, that they're not mistagged or anything like that, as well as that there's no imperfections. Or if you feel like the, the size that you got was not the right size for you, that's also the opportunity to exchange your shirts. Usually there's kind of a smaller area at the end that you can stand in line to exchange your shirts as well. The expo is located in the athletic center. And so you may need to go into this building to pick up your race shirt, just depending on the race weekend, as well as what distance you're doing. But the other thing that's located in there are the vendors. And so those are things like if you need to pick up new shoes or new clothes, a new hat, sports nutrition, etc. And then the other thing that they have in there is they have a nice display of all the different medals worst lighting ever on those, but they do have all of the medals usually up for that whole race here. Let's talk merch. This can be a pretty hot button topic for a lot of people. So I'm just gonna kind of walk you through what you can expect from the virtual queue all the way from like what it looks like and what you can find there, etc. Merchandise is located in the arena building, which is the first building that you would walk past on your way either to bid pickup or to the expo. The first day, only you need to join a virtual queue if you want to go in to get merchandise. So that is things like things that are branded for that race weekend in particular. So if you want something that is branded princess weekend or wine and dine or whatever, that's going to be in there and it's going to be the first day only that you need to join the virtual queue. The other thing that they have is not only the race theme, but they also have run Disney themed merchandise. So hats, t-shirts, bottles, etc. So if you're looking for those sorts of things, it's the merchandise area that you're going to want to go to. You can choose to completely forego this if none of that interests you, or you can go a different day when you don't have to join the virtual queue. Just know that there are going to be things and sizes that are going to sell out that first day for sure. So here's what I know about the virtual queue. If you're with a group of people, you're gonna to wanna to add them to the boarding group before it opens. And then that way you guys are all gonna get the same time and you're gonna all go together because you will need to scan your QR code to get into the merchandise area on that first day. The virtual queue is gonna open at 8.30 a.m. And basically once it opens, it says join waiting list, you join and you press confirm and then it'll give you an estimated number of minutes. That number of minutes is from the current time to when you potentially are gonna get in, not from the time it opens. So once the merchandise area opens up, what's gonna happen is instead of minutes, you're gonna see an approximate time. Now, this is where kind of my frustration when I did it in 2022 was that my estimated time went you know, it got pushed back by at least an hour. And so then just my timing of things just kind of got messed up and then I got a little bit hangry and things like that. But anyways, what I have found is that that time is gonna fluctuate up and down. And for marathon weekend, what I found was that time fluctuated, but I actually ended up getting in a little bit earlier than what it originally said. Like I said, if none of that really interests you, then you can just skip this all together. When you get called back, you're gonna to have to show your QR code. They're gonna scan you before they let you go in. And then you are gonna walk all the way around to the back. Now, if you've ever heard of the Room of Doom, there, that is when you used to line up, there was a big queue that ran and snaked through the entire room. Depending on the weekend, there has been a small lineup there, but for the most part, I found that I've kind of just like kept walking through it and walked right in. 
all of the merchandise is going to be grouped into different categories. So like there's going to be stuff for the 5k, the 10k, the half or the 10 miler, depending what race you're doing, the marathon, if it's marathon weekend, as well as just some other things like uh, challenge type merchandise um, and other just kind of uh, every weekend has some different merchandise that's available. And then same thing, there's going to be an area where there's going to be run Disney merchandise and for princess now that they've brought back uh, pre-sales, there's going to be an area for pre-sales as well. So you're just kind of walk around. It is a bit chaotic in there. And depending on what time you come in, I have found that they usually have an area where people can discard things, you know, because take something and if you don't like it, then you can hang it up for somebody else to take. And I've been had pretty good luck with finding things in that area. But it, I don't know, it's really hit or miss. So may the odds ever be in your favor for getting what you want from merchandise. You can, I highly suggest that you do mobile checkout. I know some people had trouble with mobile checkout, but it's much better than just standing in line. You can use your Disney gift cards as well if you have them either online or um, in line. And then once you exit that paid area, there's also some photo op areas. So that's where the signs for the distances are. And usually there's a character or two there as well. So there's lineups there that you can get in if you really love the pictures. So that's kind of expo, the merchandise, the pickup, all of that good stuff. The last thing for pre-race logistics is talking about groceries and ordering items to your resort. In the past, I've used Instacart. So what I like about Instacart is that you have a personal shopper. So if there's anything that's out of stock or anything like that, they're gonna message you, they're gonna try to either make substitutions and things like that, and you can approve or decline those substitutions. So I do like that. And then those items get delivered to your hotel. They're usually available at Bell Services. Now, if you go and pick it up from Bell Services, I have not been charged yet at all. However, if you have those items delivered right to your room from Bell Services, that is where the, the resort is going to give you a charge. When you order, they're gonna to need to know your name and your room number as well and then I just always use the resort address as my address when I am checking out. The things that I generally order are going to be snacks so not only snacks for the park but you know throughout the day if I come back to the resort or you know in the evening and I want to have a snack or something to eat as well as things for race morning so I generally grab some oatmeal that I can make with a coffee maker they do have the quick serve areas at their resorts open that you can, you're not gonna be able to get a full breakfast, but you can get like runner's boxes as well as I assume that you can access things like the, the microwave or the toaster. I have yet to go and use those, but I do know that they have started to have those. The other thing that I'll mention is as much as possible, please do not, do not for the love of your GI tract and the availability of real washrooms. Try not to introduce anything really new into your diet. You've been warned. And then the other thing that I always order is Epsom salts. Epsom salts is definitely the key to recovery I find personally. So I'm not gonna travel with those. I don't ever have trouble ordering them uh, from a store. So that's just something that I order online. Be sure to grab that grocery list down in the description below. In there, there's three versions, one where I have some suggestions and then two blank versions. Use whatever one suits you best. If you found this valuable, I would love a thumbs up and for you to share it with a friend. Be sure to go back, watch episode one if you haven't already, and then the other episodes will be coming out very shortly. If you have any other questions, I'd love to see them in the comments, and I will see you in the next one. Bye! Oh, oh, sure.